Well, a former uh, IDF chief of staff said Friday that Iran is closer to a nuclear bomb than they've ever been. But surprisingly, he also said that it was a mistake for the Trump administration to leave the Iranian agreement back in 2018, which I considerably disagree with. The maximum pressure campaign by the Trump administration was working, and if, in fact, he wouldn't have gotten cheated out of his election. By the way, that's something you should be watching for in the next few weeks or months. The state of Arizona is going to be reporting on whether or not their election was was, uh, rampant with fraud, and I have a hard time believing that it wasn't. And if, in fact, that is proven to be the case, you're probably going to be looking at another a number of other states, particularly uh, swing states such as Pennsylvania and Georgia, and maybe a few others uh, if they have the courage, will do the same type of uh, forensic type inspection on their um, voting process. And I'd like to see somebody do a very extensive investigation on Dominion software and also Smartmatic. Of course, these companies have denied any type of fraud, but the only reason why they're winning right now is because nobody has stepped forward or been able to do any type of thorough investigation on these machines and also the company themselves. So it's not that these companies are innocent, but they haven't, they won't allow and won't cooperate and have, re- have relied on uh, weak judgments throughout the country that simply refuse to get into this any deeper. But I'll certainly be looking at this uh, Arizona investigation and the results that come because I have a hard time believing that they're not going to see that this particular state and probably states all over the country are very infested with a lot of cheating. And getting back to the article, you can believe that uh, if Mr. Trump were still in office, that Iran would now be looking to make some type of deal, a good deal, in fact. But since the Biden administration took over, That has gone downhill. And even some corrupt uh, Israeli politicians, such as this guy, are trying to sell that Iran is closer to a nuclear weapon only because the U.S. jumped out of this deal. That's totally crazy. But I think this deal will will, uh, play into a much broader deal that will probably likely turn out to be the deal that we're all looking for in the Bible, which is the peace with many found in uh, Daniel 9, 25 through 27. Now, whether or not this ultimate deal will be a deal that uh, Israel really wants or whether they'll just be forced into the deal is still yet to be seen. But the bottom line is this is going to either lead to war, some type of war, or to peace. Now, there may be brief skirmishes like Iran and Israel have been playing out on land and sea lately, or it could actually be as violent as a, an attack on uh, Iran's nuclear facilities. But whatever the case is, I think that it's going to lead to two things. One, I believe it's going to lead to the uh, Iranians agreeing to a, a, a very large deal that will probably include Turkey, Russia, Iran, Syria, uh, the modern Arab world, Israel, the United States, probably Russia, and possibly even China. So it will likely turn out to be the peace with many. I also believe that the, something else will take place, and I think that there will come a time that peace between Israel and the Palestinians will also play a big part in this agreement. But these are two of the things that I would definitely be keeping my eye on as far as the Middle East is concerned. Now, you know that that's what the Bible says, that no matter what um, conspiracy theory you may hear or whatever the latest big thing is in Bible prophecy, it's got to, it's ultimately have, it has to go through the peace with many that will include Israel and uh, will last for seven years. And trust me, there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there, and I just have a feeling that it's going to bring about a real problem, and the problem's already out there, that many are going to fall away from believing in a pre-tribulation rapture. You know, I get uh, messages all the time from people that say there is no rapture, there is no pre-tribulation rapture. Most of these people who are emailing me and texting me used to believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, but they always say with new information that they've learned there is no pre-tribulation rapture. And you know, there's one thing for sure, you don't want to fall into to the category of those who will turn out to be scoffers. Now, some may say, well, those, those scoffers that they're ta- ta- being talked about in Second Peter 3, that's talking about people who are unsaved. Well, I don't believe it is. And let me, let me uh, tell you the reason why. First of all, let me read the verse that says that, uh, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, 
and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the, the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. First, I want to say that uh, God did not make any promise to know to those who do not know him. In fact, 1 Thessalonians 5 says that they are all in darkness, that Christians are the ones who are uh, living in the light and to, are to be anxiously waiting for the, second, or for the rapture of the church to take place at any moment. And of course, like I said, the only ones I ever get scoffing from are those who are Christians and who have turned from believing in a pre-tribulation rapture and now believe that Christians are going through the uh, tribulation period and will be raptured some t- sometime toward the end. And they are also the ones who are constantly emailing me and leaving comments on my YouTube channel, trying to persuade people that there is not going to be a pre-tribulation period rapture. And that's why I tell people don't get involved in these conspiracy theories because every time you're disappointed when one or another does not come true, you're just that much closer to turning into one of these people who no longer believes in a pre-tribulation period rapture. That's why I constantly tell my listeners, don't frequent these places, these websites, these uh, TV shows, or whatever the case may be, that are constantly filling your head with these uh, unbiblical conspiracy theories and uh, have got you believing that the Lord is about to wrap the church based upon these crazy conspiracy theories. Now, certainly we are living in the last days, and certainly the Lord can rapture the, the uh, church at any moment. And yes, there are signs out there right now. There are biblical signs. But those are the signs that you should be looking at and hanging on to. Not these crazy conspiracy theories like, for example, the blood moons. And before that, it was the Mayan calendar. And so on and so forth. So try to stay as biblical as you can. And keep away all the things that you know are not coming straight out of the Bible. And stick with the Bible itself. You know, a good rule of thumb is this right here. If it's not in the Bible, it's not biblical. But one thing I do believe that will turn out to be biblical is this peace with many that I believe is right now being worked on behind the scenes that could ultimately turn out to be the gateway agreement that's going to lead right into the tribulation period. And of course, we believe as Christians that the rapture will take place first. And I want to ask you right now to take two seconds out and to like this video, share a comment in the comment section, and of course, subscribe. And of course, if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You know, I'm going to say this for the last time someday soon. And you certainly don't want to be a person that keeps putting it off and find yourself on the other side of the rapture of the church heading toward the tribulation period. So I'd encourage you to take the time to accept the Lord as Savior. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Repent of your sins and from this day forward live for him. And you that are Christians, get a copy of my tribulation period uh, survival guide. In fact, get a couple copies and start passing them out to your friends and loved ones. They're not going to have the information that's in this book unless you get it to them. And I can guarantee you, once the tribulation period begins, the world is going to be geared toward getting you and whoever's left behind to take the mark of the Antichrist. But we know from Scripture that the antidote for not taking the mark is knowing Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you will take the mark no matter how many, no matter how many books you might have. You could certainly have my tribulation period survival guide, but if you don't accept the Lord as Savior... You're going to ultimately take the mark of the beast, even though you may even plan in your mind to not do it. The Bible says that this delusion will be so strong that if it were possible, even the very elect would take the mark. So don't think for a second that you are going to be able to resist the mark of the Antichrist just because you know about it. The only thing that's going to save you is if you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. So I'd encourage you to get this book as soon as possible. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.